Okay, we can start reassembling now. Um, we're going to start off with the rear pump. Just going to put a new gasket in first. Just make sure that the holes all line up. That one goes uh, which way? That way. And again, if these gaskets are a little bit, if the holes are out of whack a little bit, um, you can just put them in the microwave like I explained earlier, and it will just draw a bit of that moisture out of it and shrink the gasket a little bit. So now we've got the, the rear pump. We've put all that together. Again, careful not to lose that little, that little pin there. Um, you might have to stick it in with a bit of grease or something just temporarily or Vaseline just until we get the, um, the pump in place. Either that or we need to ch um, put the gasket, or the gasket, the case on, on its side anyway to put the output shaft in with that little pin. Um, I've also lined up that slot um, that drive, drives that little pin. Um, that, that little pin is important. Um, I think it actually supplies pressure to the um, governor. So if the pin breaks, um, you'll be stuck in uh, first gear. It won't change out of second gear, out of first gear into second. So um, it's always important to make sure the head on that little pin is good. Uh, we're going to put a new one in this. So anyway, I'm going to put put the um, the rear pump in. Then we're going to put the case on its side and put the output shaft in. Another thing you might have noticed is that the both the front and the rear pump have a little stamp on it that shows you the top mark. It just makes it easier to align um, where those holes are. And also, if you have a look on the rear one, there's a little little notch. It says top, and there's a little notch there. Um, that's actually where that that little groove is. So, just so you know how to realign the pump um, when you're trying to get the output shaft in with that little pin. And because this is an internal gasket, I'm gonna put um, some oil on it um, just so it doesn't stick to that case over there it's a bit awkward scraping that gasket off right in there so it's more of a courtesy thing for the next rebuilder or uh, or makes it easier if it comes back to your repair so I've put a bit of oil on there now we're gonna top mark Line up those holes. All looks good. And we're just going to put those outside bolts in. We're not going to put the other the retainer uh, where the bearing is in there. Not yet, anyway. Now just put all the bolts in. And I'm just going to tighten them up slowly and evenly. Okay, we're nearly start, uh, ready to start reassembling it all. So we're going to start off with the rear band, putting it in. Um, what I'm going to do, a lot of people get confused with the little linkages on the rear band, so I'm just going to show it assembled outside the transmission, and then, um, and then you'll understand how it sort of works uh, when I explain it. Now there's the diagram of, of the rear band. Um, it doesn't really explain to you um, how to put it together. So I'm just going to show you on, on the actual band. Now you've basically got these, these parts. Now what we do uh, is we hook this one into there. 
and then this one actually applies in here sorry I'm just out of camera holding it with one hand um, this one applies it here and these little hooks here actually press on there so I'll assemble it and I'll show you what I mean and there you go you can see that little lug there hooks into the one side of the band and over here you've got this where the servo applies and then that just applies the band like that like so there you go I'll just pull it apart again and just pull maneuver that bit out slide that one out and that one so that one actually goes in there there we go simple when you know now I've got the rear servo we're going to put that in that actually locks on that band as well on that little bracket and and it pulls pulls it or applies it as you as it's working so we're going to replace this ceiling ring you can see the outsides aren't very worn because this one moves up like there it's going to actually wear on the ends there but before you put your new one back in just double check it in in the bore there we can see the, the new one just see and you can see how much gap is at the bottom there that one's all right so we're going to push this in we're going to use a um, engine ring compressor and just tap it in um, don't try and put it in with a screwdriver you'll end up damaging uh, either the ring or this um, bore there and these are the little jiggers I'm talking about um, we end up just putting that on the on the ring and tightening it up and then just tapping it tapping it in and this will hold hold the ring in place until it slides into that bore put a little bit of oil on that bore as well before you put it in okay I've got that there we just place that on the soft hammer and then we just tap that in and there we go that's popped into the piston in the, uh, into that bore nicely so now we're going to hook up um, the band onto that uh, servo and put those linkages uh, little brackets and linkages on it now I'll basically show you how to do it but um, it is a little bit fiddly I've, I've put the brackets on the band and then I poke a sh screwdriver through where the, the band adjustment is the bracket needs to just come and hold that there like so and put that in there and then we just sort of rotate the band back just so that that little lug falls into the servo pist um, rod there and there we go that's got it now Another thing that you can do on that adjustment rod, sometimes people put a washer on there um, just so there's a little bit more band adjustment. But I think you've got plenty there even without it. So this one actually came off the, the front band. So, but you can do the same and put one on the rear band as well. So we're just going to put that in there just so it holds everything in place the servos all the way in and I'm just gonna I don't know if you can see that coming through I'll just maneuver that band a little bit better in place there we go Easy peasy. 
Okay. Now I'm just going to put the, the drum in. Don't forget the, the fibre washer there um, when you're putting that in. And this will just hold from the inside. And just slowly lower it. Careful not to, to push the band out of the way. And that's good. Now you can actually tighten up that um, band adjustment all the way up just so it locks onto that drum. One, it'll hold that drum in place when you tip this on its side to put the, uh, the output shaft in. And two, it'll stop all these um, little linkages and brackets falling out. Okay, we're ready to put the little pin. Uh, there's a new little pin there that drives the rear pump. So we're going to put it in there with a little bit, of, it goes in the smaller hole, the other hole, the bigger the holes, uh, the lubrication port. So yeah, it goes in the smaller hole and we're going to pack it with some water pump grease because it's a lot uh, warmer here now. And just remember to have that pin up towards the top when we put our case on its, uh, on its side there. Just make sure that the top is at the top, um, just so we can get it through that slot. It should just slide in nicely um, without any effort. And also be careful not to, when you're pushing it through the uh, rear drum and the, um, the rear pump that you don't damage it. Okay, we've got the pin in. Uh, I'll just show you. We've got the old bush goes onto that reverse drum and that just slides over it. So you can see you can just slowly maneuver it in over that bush. Another thing I like to do is just mark where that is on the output shaft just on the splines I can rub that off easy afterwards it just helps you line it up as you're pushing it through there we go that's gone all the way through now here's the front band um, you can see over here that the little tangs where the servo is they're facing up and over here the plate is just flat um, I'll, I'll show you on another diagram and I'll just show you on the actual um, band what it looks like and here I've got a diagram of the band um, you can just see how those over here the little um, bent bits are pointing up towards the band and over here, well, over here, that flat bit's away from the band. But I'll show you on the, on the actual band what it looks like. Here we've got the front band. Now this actually goes in, just in there like that, with these little lugs. Um, the servo applies on, on there. So that one goes on the single single wrap. On the double wrap, you just make sure this flat bit's um, facing you, or those little those little things there actually locate on the on the band. Oh, sorry, camera won't focus, but you can see it like that. These actually guide it up here, and that goes like that, and then you've got your, um, where the adjuster is, over here. You can, if you like, you can put a washer on there just so the 
is more adjustment, but uh, I think the thread's long enough for it anyway. And that's basically how it goes in. Now I'm just going to swap that uh, new ring on the front servo. And again, we first test it. Make sure it's all good. Very nice. New one on. Then we grab our trusty ring compressor. Try and get it even in there. Nice and tight. Don't forget the spring. A little bit of oil. And we just tap it in. There we go. Going straight in. Now that one won't go any further than that because it's got that big spring under there. So it's just going to go level with that housing. Now I've got all the both servos in, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put that um, to sit back on that block. Now we're going to put the bearing back on. So we've got the circlip goes on first, then the bearing, then we've got another circlip and this retainer actually um, slots into where there'll be a slot in the bearing that where we need to bolt it up to. Now the new bearing they'll come like this. Um, you get rid of that circlip and we pry off these little rubber protectors just with a little scribe or we've got that little flat tool that we use um, that has to be an open bearing so it can get lubrication or splashing from the transmission fluid get rid of that and we just use this tool Just pop that little rubber cover off. There we go. And that, that slot goes to the outside. We can this is spring steel so we can press it on. So, and that just helps hold it in, in place. Actually, it, it's opened up a little bit, so we might even just put it in the vise and just squash it up a bit, just bend it in a tiny bit. It is spring steel, so be careful if you're doing that. 
doesn't fly off. There we go, I've just squashed it a bit. And that's a nice snug fit now. This opening actually goes to the I think goes to the right side of the as you're looking into the output shaft. Make sure it goes into that into the groove nicely. Follow that by the bearing. It might just need to tap tap that on. And we're just going to check, make sure all those holes are lined up, which they are. So now I'll just tap that on gently. Okay, I've tapped it on. You could probably use a get a tube um, and tap it in. Um, I just use this old um, valve lifter, which has got the that bit there. So when you're tapping it on, it's actually pushing to the right up against the shaft there when you're knocking it in. So we've tapped that in. Now I'm just going to put the other circlip on. We heard it snap in. Always good to turn the circlip like that just to make sure it's in properly. And now we can put the bolts in the in that little retainer and that'll actually hold it where it should where that whole thing should be. And then this output shaft won't move while we're doing working on the other side. Put them all on first. Put those little tangs towards the band. And this that little plate there just goes towards the band. It actually just rotates on, on the band there like that, if you can see that. So it's supporting the band from not moving. If you can see that. And if we put it around the other way, well, it still work, but um, it's sort of in a little bit there. It's supposed to run on that little bit there. Probably wouldn't matter too much actually if you put it in the wrong way. And I'm just going to put the washer up on the adjuster there and put the that little pin there. go. Okay, now I'm going to put the drum in. Just make sure that rings okay. I've tried it in, in this other part. Tried it nicely in there. We're going to put a little bit of oil on there just so it slides in easier when we're putting it on. And also just make sure that thrust washer in there is just centered. Um, it does sometimes drop down a bit. And this thrust washer here, don't forget that one. There we 
go. Let's right in. And that looks okay. Roughly level with the end of the band there, as you can see. Um, this is hanging down a little bit, but not too much. And now we're just going to put the, the end cover and the valve body and pump in. Now don't forget to put the new banana seal on there. Um, this one, you can actually feel it's a little bit hardened and flattened out. So before you, we put the um, put everything back together, we just make sure that that's on properly. That is the same one. It's got, got the extra seal. It must be because it suits um, other transmissions as well. But just make sure it fits nicely and snugly inside those little slots. And then that'll just press up up against the housing in the transmission. Um, and actually it's not sitting there very well so Again, we're going to put a bit of water pump grease on there just so it holds it a little bit better. Also, just going to put a little bit of transmission oil over those rings and also in the case and inside here where that input shaft ring goes. Just makes it slide in a little bit easier. And I'm just going to double check that gasket, make sure it's hasn't soaked up all that oil completely. As in a few places. There we go. Now we're ready to lift this heavy part and put it into the case. Now we're going to slide this bell housing on. Um, this little slot, or this section here, will actually slide into here. So when we get close there, um, we're just going to double check that that selector leakage hasn't moved, um, just so we can line it up so it slots into there. Um, those two other holes um, just support that shaft there and over here. Uh, just put a little bit of oil around there just so that ring slides on a little bit easier and on that ring there too. Camera's in the way a bit. going to get it close and then we're just going to and then we're just going to line up that little linkage inside I'm just checking that it's not going to counterweight that while I go around and move that selector now I'm just looking at the lining up of it it's just got to go down a little tiny little bit more so we'll just slowly tap that down. That still needs to go a little bit more um, when you have a look on the side there. You can see that it's still not lined up so it's got to go down a little bit further. Once that's lined up, we're just going to slide it right in. Just also just check that uh, banana seal at the bottom there um, if it hasn't come away while you've been doing all this. There we go. Because the bell housing's been hanging down a bit, uh, you just have to push the top side up a little bit and just pull it onto the little guide pin. Um, that's just barely holding onto that guide pin. 
so now I'm just going to put some bolts in and just tighten it up evenly um, right around just so it pulls it up very slowly onto the guide pins. Just have to lift a little bit just till we get it going and then it'll just pull up onto those guide pins. Now I've brought the bell housing up pretty close, or, or have, and now we're just going to um, just move that selector and just make sure um, that it's lined up. Over here, through that hole there, you should be able to see the uh, manual uh, selector lift linkage move up and down, and also this pin here. So we'll just do that now. It's not, not focusing on it. A little bit hard to see with this camera, but you can see this one moving up and down. That means that this linkage is in the right place. You've, we've hooked it up properly. And into park. We can test it, put it into park and just see if it locks it up on the parking pool. And that's working fine. You can see it moving up and down in there. Low, drive, neutral, reverse and into park. And it's locked up here on the on the output chart. Good one. Now sometimes you might find uh, you've got odd size or length bolts. Uh, so sometimes if you put the wrong one in, you can damage uh, the case if you put the wrong bolt in the wrong hole. So what I do is sometimes I just get there and put a screwdriver, just mark where the end of it is with your finger, and you can see that that bolt's got a little bit more room to move. So that is the right bolt for here. In this particular um, situation you're not going to have a problem but sometimes you can. So I've just found this an old washer um, and I've just sort of faced a little bit on the stone and I'm going to put a bit of celastic around it, smear it on there because um, these you can get a bit of splashing there and get a, an annoying leak coming from there. Um, that's actually probably about, oh, hard to say, but um, it is up on the where the oil level is, so you're going to get a bit of splashing there and possibly oil just dripping out of it. I'm just going to put the elastic on both sides of the, the washer. It has to be fairly thick here because we've got to actually make a like a little seal there. That should be enough. And on the other side we're just going to put it on the head of the bolt on the inside. I don't usually use this much elastic anywhere. But here we have to. And we're going to tighten it up and leave it there. Okay, now we're going to put the speedo gear on. So I've got these pliers that I use to hold flammable things. Don't wreck your good ones, get a, an old cruddy pair. And I'm just going to hold that speedo gear in place and we're going to get it um, exactly center in there so we're just going to heat it up on the on the flame you don't have to get it red hot or anything like that just try and heat it up evenly
and when you think you've got it hot enough you just quickly slide it on that shaft and try and get it as central as you can otherwise it might chew out the uh, the driven speedo gear on the cable and I'm going to give that a go now Doesn't look too bad. Now just to show you the governor, we've got the governor in and that just basically slides in. Probably good to put a little bit of oil on there so it's not dry. I'll actually do that right now otherwise I'll forget. bit on the gear. Now you can see when that turns one way it's actually pulling those gears down and when when you go the other way it's actually pushing. It's trying to push that governor out on those on the angle of those gears. So it's very important to have this little plastic um, little plug there and that'll hit up against that cover so you can see it's actually worn a little spot there where it keeps rubbing on there so we're just going to smoothen that off um, with a stone as well just so it doesn't chew into that little plastic plug as much there we go it's nice and smooth in there I've ran the super fine stone over it and I've also ran the stone around on that surface. So we're going to put a new gasket on and put it back together. Again I don't want it to stick on the case so I'm just going to smear a, a thin film of oil transmission fluid just on that surface mating surface there just so it sticks on the cover and not on the case painting the bum to clean the clean them off there we go we'll just put the gasket back on the right way would be nice Okay. I think it goes that way. Yep. All right. We'll put the bolts in there. 